Hey everybody, welcome to the GData 2010 Internet Security Prevention Review. I'm Matt with remove-malware.com and I have downloaded a trial version of uh, GData. Um, GData Antivirus is the component that we're going to be kind of looking at and, and really GData Antivirus is they, they do not have an antivirus engine of their own. What they do is they take the Avast antivirus engine and the Bitdefender antivirus engine and combine them both to give you um, two great signature packages um, in one single antivirus application. Um, so normally you always hear that you cannot run more than one antivirus at a time. Well, what GData does is it just takes their engines and integ integrates the Avast engine and the Bitdefender engine into one single product. So therefore, when you're on the internet or you're downloading something, um, it's being scanned by the first engine, then by the second engine. And uh, GData 2010 also includes behavioral analysis and some heuristics as well. It's extremely cheap. I think for three PCs, it's about forty bucks. I could be wrong, but I think it's around that price. Um, you can buy it online. You won't find it in any store. I don't think none that I've seen in St. Louis, at least. I'm pretty sure it's ranked close to number one right now. Uh, at this moment, the installer is absolutely huge. It's about two hundred and fifty megabyte installer. I've, test, I've, I've tested this uh, application throughout the week, so I kind of know how things are going to go. Um, I, I've probably thrown about 100 URLs at it, and the results have been pretty interesting, and you'll probably see that tonight. The install process is pretty straightforward. Um, I should say that this does work on XP, Vista, 32-bit, and 64-bit. It's an excellent, um, it's an excellent antivirus package for somebody that is not quite comfortable comfortable with a uh, HIPS product or uh, a, a behavioral analysis product um, or a sandboxer. It's probably the best way to go because you get two signature packages in one. And that's on-demand scanning and real-time scanning as well. And the price, you just can't, I mean, it's just nice. You know, 40 bucks for three PCs. Very good deal. In fact, I'm so happy with these guys, I'm probably going to sign up as an affiliate for these guys so I can try to sell this uh, on my site. So if, if you know, if you got somebody in your family or something like that and they're just not quite ready for a HIPS, HIPS product, you know, where you have to answer some, some questions that you may not know what they're referring to, having two signature scanners is awesome. And I've also found that you can train almost anybody to use something like Sandboxy. I have a lot of, a lot of my clients now that uh, use Sandboxy. And um, I basically just set up Sandboxy to delete the Sandbox once they exit um, their browser. And that seems to work great for everyone. So... So yeah, it is kind of a massive install, that's why it's taken so long. Um, I could pause it, but I kind of want to show everyone how long it really takes to install it. This computer has uh, about 384 megs of RAM. You know, nothing crazy at all. It's running Windows XP Pro. It is a virtual machine. I'm using VMware to test. It has absolutely no patches on it from Microsoft. I'm completely unpatched. So we're really just relying on the protection of the antivirus package itself.
I've got a wide range of URLs tonight. I've got 10 malicious URLs. Some are drive-bys. Some are Trojans. Some are rogues. A couple of worms. A whole bunch of stuff. Well, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, I'm not sure what it's doing here. It usually doesn't take this long, but I can see my hard drive... If I pull this up a little bit, down here you can see the hard drive is just lit solid. Okay, there we go. So, okay, so this is the interface for uh, installing it. And what was next? And if you're installing this on a normal PC, it's not going to be this slow. I I'm using VMware on an external hard drive through USB, so <laughs> it's going to be slower. Um, basically, they want to go ahead and collect some information um, on your on your malware that you may detect. We're going to go ahead and install a trial version. Of course, if you bought the full version, you need to say full version. I'll do a custom install just to show you the custom options. You can choose where you want it to go. Um, you can install the antivirus, and they also give you a bootable disk, um, something something like Ultimate Boot CD for Win kind of thing. It checks for uh, antivirus updates hourly. That's awesome. And it'll run a complete uh, scan for viruses weekly. And that's it. Nothing special. We'll just go ahead and install. And it will want you to reboot at the end of that install process. Um, the next review I have on my list, I think it's on my website, um, that's a remove, my blog, remove-malware.com um, is going to be F-Secure's new product. I think it's called ISTP, I think that's it. Now, a lot of people um, keep emailing me about doing removal reviews, and I sort of, um, I'm mainly basing the removal reviews off using uh, bootable antivirus, but I am going to go ahead and create a little series, what if, uh, you know, your client, or you, you do not have a, uh, a working CD-ROM, because that happened to me this week, and I had to rough it out. So I'm going to show you how I did, kind of did that. I got to check my host PC here because it's kind of slower than normal. Yeah, not much I can do about that. If you don't want to watch this, just go ahead and fast forward through it. But a lot of people always hammer me saying they want to see how long everything really takes. So let the file uh, download in YouTube and go right through all the stuff that you don't want to see. I'm so excited because tonight... I got this massive, massive video card for my computer. This thing is as long as my entire computer. It's an NVIDIA 280. It's just, just gigantic. I can't wait to install it. Had to get a new power supply with it. 
Just started playing Crisis. Great game. I'm a big World of Warcraft guy too. Love that game. I love uh, G Data's logo. It just looks like a uh, looks almost like Superman or something. So it's not just um, stuck here. The hard drive is going crazy. So it's still installing stuff. So it placed a little icon on our desktop there. And of course, Windows says GData 2010 is out of date. It is. We'll go ahead and hit finish. And it wants us to reboot. Okay, the PC rebooted. And we're going to go ahead and open up GData. And we still need to update uh, GData. So as soon as you open up GData, it, it kind of looks like uh, reminds me of the Norton stuff because you see the you know the CPU CPU load, GData is using this much and the system is using this much. So I'm going to go ahead and perform an update. And when you try to perform an update, you get this uh, access data for virus updates. Basically, they say we want an email address. So we're going to go ahead and register with the server. This is pretty painless. Put in your first name. Put in your surname, and I'll just give them my email address, emrezos at gmail.com. Log in. You have successfully registered, and it immediately starts downloading updates for Engine A and Engine B. And I forgot to actually check what Engine A is and which one Engine B is. But basically, we're dealing with the Avast engine. We're dealing with the Bit Defender engine. Both really good engines, in my opinion. And then it's going to go ahead and update phishing files. Not sure I really care about that. Program files and whitelist. Okay, so all the engines have been updated, the phishing files have been updated, program files and whitelists. We'll go ahead and close this. So we're completely updated here. And it wants me to go ahead and do a virus quick check. I'll go ahead and do that. And I'll pause the video while that's running. Even though this PC is clean, I'm just going to go ahead and follow the book. Okay, uh, I guess this uh, review will be in two parts because I accidentally stopped the recorder. Um, so this is part two. Anyway, uh, did a quick scan, of course. It didn't find anything because this is a clean PC. And um, once you do the scan, I've noticed that it... Um, basically doesn't really care if you did a quick scan. It still says last virus check, um, no execution. If I hit the correct button, sometimes that corrects it. And basically what it's going to go ahead and do is do another quick scan. But I'm not sure the whole point of that. I've already done one, it doesn't detect it, but uh, no biggie. I think it scans about 300 and something things. So 
Okay, basically this thing wants to do a full virus scan, and I don't really have time for it to scan the whole machine, so the machine is uh, brand new and clean, just take my word for it. Okay, under um, under virus check, we have a couple of options here. You can go ahead and uh, check the computer, check the memory, the startup, you can select files, removable uh, media, and you can also check for rootkits. Under Virus Monitor, we have both engines enabled. You can go ahead and schedule a scan, check your quarantine, look at your logs, or create a boot CD that contains uh, all the G-Data stuff. But last virus update, it goes, you know, goes ahead and tells you. You can go ahead and update right before you know you do a scan or something, or you know you just want to check and see if something's out there. But we have all the latest stuff right now. Um, program version, you can go ahead and update that too. Under options on virus check, if you do a manual scan, it uses both engines. Recommended, optimal detection, good performance. Or you can scan with engine A or engine B. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but if you want to, go ahead. Um, if we find an infection, it's going to go ahead and log it, which is sort of weird if you do a manual scan. Um, what I would do would be to disinfect, if not possible, go ahead and quarantine the file. And I'll go ahead and hit apply, and this is only on a manual scan. If you look at the advanced options, we're, we're going to go ahead and scan all files. Priority to the scanner is going to be high. You've got heuristics checked on, and then you're going to check for dialers, spyware, adware, riskware, check for rootkits. Only checked new and updated files. So it's not going to run through your entire PC. Anything new, it's going to go ahead and check, which is nice. Saves a lot of time. Uh, this is the real-time scanner right here. Both engines are uh, enabled. Uh, in case of an infection, it's going to go ahead and queried, query desired action. So it's going to ask us what to do. Uh, you can go ahead and say whatever you want to do. Um, what, um, what I'll do is just leave it on defaults at this point. You can go ahead and add exceptions. So things that you do not want scanned by GData, you can go ahead and add them right here. You also have an advanced button. And pretty much the same thing. Uh, heuristics, check for dialer, spyware, adware, riskware, check only new files. Um, and then you've got a couple other options that have to do with mail and um, you know a couple other things. Like it will check the system areas during system start, which is good. I think you're going to kind of slow down your startup a little bit, so it's up to you if you want to keep that on or not. Um, pretty much everything else is stuff that I don't really care about. Web protection, um, you can go ahead and set up a few options in here. You're monitor monitoring uh, HTTP traffic, a um, couple of other things, nothing big. It, it, it monitors instant messaging which is awesome. A lot of um, a lot of things come through IM these days. And then you've got email protection. So without further delay here, let's go ahead and uh, crack open Internet Explorer and let's throw 10 URLs at GData. So GData, keep in mind like I said before, it's using the Avast and the Bitdefender scan engines. So it's, you know, your, your first opinion, you're getting your second opinion. And then it also has, and they don't really talk about it, but it has some behavioral analysis engine inside of GData, and you don't really see too much about it on their site. Good luck finding information. Um, they don't have much of a English website if you're English. Um, if you're German, you're set. But uh, if you're English like me and you don't know any other language, uh, you're not going to find much on GData. You might want to head over to Wilders, or you can check out our forum, um, remove malware, remove-malware.com/forums. And this is the first link. This is a Trojan, and I got these links a few minutes ago, so I hope they're still active. It's hard to find good stuff. So yeah, um, it looks like Engine A, whatever that is. Someone will tell me. Um, 
blocked a Trojan. And we'll go ahead and hit, hit OK. It says website blocked. It says the site contains infected code. All right. So we'll just go back to MSN, get out of that site. Uh, the next URL is a drive-by. This is a crazy... Well, these, these drive-bys are crazy. I mean, you don't even... You, you know, if you don't have antivirus turned on, you're just going to get infected like that if you don't have your updates, too. Um, so right here, it's caught by Engine B. Um, gives you the URL you were trying to access. It says virus found while downloading, downloading web content. Um, and it's JS Obfuscated BO Trojan. Let's go for URL number three, which is what I've been dealing with a lot this past month. And this is Kubeface, uh, Facebook uh, worm. And uh, but the cool thing about GData, it doesn't even give you the option to download anything. It doesn't even let you try. It just blocks it. it gets rid of it right away. Uh, virus, Win32, Kubeface, Toast. Uh, next one is another drive-by. And it is blocked by Engine B. Uh, number f five is Virut, probably one of the nastiest infections I've ever found to date. Um, it's blocked as trojan.crypt.xpack and that's blocked by Engine A. Number six is a Q-host infection, another nasty virus. And it's blocked by Engine A. Number seven. Uh, number seven appears to be dead. Let's see. Yeah, it's dead now. I'll have to get one more. Uh, number eight is a drive-by. Number eight is dead. Number nine is a fake uh, rogue antivirus. Eventually, it's trying to come down as codec. You know how you can see how I, I don't even really have the option to run or save or anything. G data just pops up and says, "Okay, I found something here," and it was caught by the heuristics engine of engine engine A. And we'll just hit cancel to that. Number 10 is particularly nasty. It's a patcher. And it is ruthless. It just keeps hammering at you. Well, a few minutes ago, it was really, really nasty. I don't know if they've just cleaned it or it's not distributing because it saw my IP address. That's what a lot of these will do now. Go ahead and refresh the site. Hmm, 
Nothing there. All right. Well, I need to go get three more links here, so I'll be right back. Okay, let's go back with number seven here. And that is a drive-by. And it is caught by engine A. Okay, URL number eight. Guess that one's dead now. Let's go ahead and try another one, number eight. And that was blocked by engine B, uh, Trojan Agent Delph. And let's go ahead and pause this. Okay, number nine. Okay, again, my uh, stupid recorder stopped on number ten. Uh, number 10 was a drive-by, and G-Data blocked it. So, as you can see, G-Data G uh, Internet Security 2010 blocked everything I threw at it. Um, this is probably over 50 or 60 different links I've thrown at it, and it's blocked every one of them. And that's because G-Data uses two very good scan engines. It uses Avast and it uses Bitdefender. And um, when you've got you know your first opinion and you got your second opinion, it's kind of hard for malware to kind of work the way through two different programs. Um, and it also has a behavioral analysis engine. I just didn't get to show you that because the scan engines actually picked up everything this time. So so that's it. Uh, I highly recommend G-Data for anybody who is not comfortable with using like a HIPS product or you just want to have uh, two antiviruses on your machine basically um, and uh, w without having to uh, you know load, load them up uh, and trying to get two real-time engines to work together. So G-Data integrates those engines for you and it puts it in a really nice package. So, so that's it for the G Data Prevention Review. It was perfect, and um, I hope you guys liked it. And that's it. My next review is going to be the new F Secure. So I will talk to you guys later.